I'm gonna show you how to animate in Scratch, except we're gonna be using Turbo Warp. Because although you can do everything I do in Scratch, you need this handy little extension called Scratch Add-ons, and uh, Scratch hates that, so uh, I just kinda uh, use Turbo Warp. It's a free download, it's great, it's Scratch, it just has a bunch of extra features that are super nice. So here we are in the Turbo Warp desktop editor, and the first thing we need to do is we need to make our character, because uh, without a character we don't really have anything to animate. Uh. So if you pay attention to my weekly polls, you already know what these guys end up looking like, but I'm gonna walk you through the design process, okay? So I always start with looking at like where they appear in canon, canonically. And then after I've got like a good idea of how I want their personalities to be, I go over to the fan art page and I'm like, well, how does the fandom draw them? Because I know if I stray too far from the beaten path, somebody's gonna have my head on a spike. And you can completely skip this step if you have an original character. Now that I have a good idea of how I want them to be, I can take out a sheet of paper in real life. I mean, I can take out a sheet of paper in real life and draw some rough sketches. And then I can draw some less rough sketches and now we can start making our puppet on scratch turn that music up baby because we're gonna be here for a while and we start by making the head so that way you can tell what facial expression it is and you know what you're designing like it, it really sets the character for the puppet right i brought mike in as a reference i start with bonnie bully because he's amazing notice how i'm only using the shape tools and then reforming them using the point tool if you use the brush tool it'll give you way too many points and you won't be able to animate the way i do also, I'm kind of basing Bonnie Bully off of Cassie, too, because... Because I subscribe to Game Theory! Yeah! Now that we've got the face, we're going to want to move on to the hair. And here I found it helpful to use the brush tool. Like, take the brush tool, outline your hair, and then go in and fill in with the vector shapes. Then once we're done on the head, we can shrink it and start on the torso. If you've made other puppets before, it's really helpful to bring in a size reference so you don't make someone accidentally, like, too giant or too tiny. And then we work from the top down. It's extremely important to group things correctly. Like, if you know something's gonna be together and you don't want it to, like, go flying out by itself, you need to group it, okay? So, like, take the shirt. The red part and the stripes are different objects. So you're gonna want to group them together so that you can move it as one piece. And you just press the group button up there. You're also gonna want to do this with the different parts of arms and the sleeves, and then again with the different parts of the legs. And don't forget to group the hands. That's very important. Because you do not want to keep track of all those fingers. And there he is! Isn't he beautiful? And now it's time for the fun parts. I never learned how to animate, never watched no tutorials or nothing. What I did instead was poke through the projects of other Scratch animators and see how they made it look so good, Malin! There's two, like, basic methods of animating. In frame by frame, you take a pose, and then each frame you, like, move it a little bit until you reach your destination. And then in in-betweening, you take a pose, and then you have what you want it to look like at the end of the animation, and then you go back and like fill in the gaps to make it smooth. There's no right or wrong way. I've used both. I use in-betweening a lot more now because I like the bounce, baby. But I used to use frame by frame all the time. Like that's what I made with all of my Undertale animations. Sympyrus doesn't exist. It can't hurt you. <laughs> We're gonna be using in-betweening today though. So let's make our beginning pose and our end pose. And this is where that grouping becomes really important, y'all. Because if the arm ain't grouped, it ain't gonna move together. You're gonna have to select all the parts separately, and you can do that, but it, it just takes forever. And it already takes forever, so you, you want to shave off those seconds where you can. Now that we've got the beginning and end, we can start making the in-betweens. So my first in-between is always like a little bit back or behind the first frame, if that makes any sense, because I want to get that bounce. So it's going to tilt back a little bit. Then I'm going to move it over so it, this is like the middle part. And then we're going to go in. And when we go in, we're going to overshoot ourselves a little bit and then bounce back up. And that's how you get like that super bouncy look in my animations that people love or hate. I don't know. It's kind of like William Afton's voice, okay? You, you, you got to take a side. You got to pick a side on the battlefield. So as you can see, I move like the main body first. And then I go back and move all like the smaller things like the arms. Before we do that, we need to set up the code to actually run the animation. So the code is very simple. If you have no experience, don't worry. You just drag out this green flag block. We're gonna drag in a position block and a show block, which is just gonna center it in the middle. And then we're gonna drag in a costume block that's gonna switch it to the first custom in our animation. And then we're gonna take this loop, which is gonna run through all of our frames. And I always set the wait time to 0 0.05 seconds because I find that works best for me, but it might not be the... Uh, you, 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 blah, you, blah. you might need a different one, okay? You're animating in your own style. Now we run it through, and, and it looks kind of good, I guess. 
So now we can go in and start working on all the little details. Let's start with the arm position first. And we do the exact same thing we did with the body, but now we're just paying attention to the arms path and bouncing it that way. And then I like to add a little bit of extra flappiness to the hands because I like how it looks. It's like they're waving every time they move their arm. A movement is also a great way to conceal a blink, especially if you're like changing facial expressions. Blinks are a great way to do that. My blinks, I always have like the normal eye and then you stretch a little bit up and down and you also stretch up the, the eyebrows and then the next frame, it's the eye closed and you make the eyebrows go down. And the next frame, it's like, it's widened again and the eyebrows are up and then it goes down a little bit and then it's finally resting. And I, I find that looks pretty nice. That looks okay. Now for everybody's favorite part, the hair. Some people can animate hair so well and I just stare at them and I'm like, wow, you people are gods. The basics of hair movement is that you just look at the motion and you're like, how, how does the wind affect it? Like how, which way is it blowing? So while the character is still in motion, I'm gonna pretend like that wind's moving and like sh rotate the hair or shift it however to make it look like it's, it's being blown through. But hair is also bouncy. So it's not just gonna stop as soon as the wind stops. It's going to go back and then it's gonna go forth again. So you just gotta play around around with this. You can spend hours playing around with this, but as soon as you have something you like, like, just keep it, man. Like, nobody's looking that closely, I hope. Stay away from me! <laughs> so hey, that, that's looking pretty good. Let's add sound! Let's make this even more complicated! So I haven't even chosen a voice actor for this guy yet, so we're just gonna use a goofy voice line from me. Myself. Scooby Dooby Doo! Yeah, I couldn't think of anything else. Look, he looks like the kind of cool kid who would watch Scooby Doo, okay? Scooby-Doo in the 80s, let's go. So for lip sync, all you really gotta do is just pay attention to your own mouth. Like, how does your mouth move when you say the words? And then you just gotta put it on there. There's like a couple basic shapes. Like, we got the teeth closed, we got the mouth open, we got the mouth in an O, which we're gonna be using a lot because... There's so many O's in what we chose for it to say. There isn't really any open-mouthed ones, but, uh, yeah, and you just, you just gotta, like, play it through and see what works. Like, does it stick? Is it good? Great. We did it. Scooby-Dooby-Doo! No, so, it, it's looking pretty good. Here's some things you need to be aware of if you want to export this to YouTube, okay? See those numbers at the bottom? That's telling you how big your costume is. If either of those parameters exceeds 509 pixels, it'll become fuzzy when you go to big screen. So you gotta go back and look over each individual frame and make sure that none of them are exceeding that limit. And if you want widescreen, then you can just, like, drag in these bars. I, I made these bars a while ago from just screenshotting a YouTube video and then tracing it, essentially. Yeah, and then you just record the blank spot and you're done. Just use a screen recorder. Super Warp also has a built-in record feature, if you prefer that way. So yeah, that's that's kind of my process. And you just repeat that like 50 times and you got yourself an animation. Kind of sucks though, because like that animation alone took me like 30 minutes. You think of all the voice lines that are in an animation, like multiply 30 minutes by that much time. And that's how much time I spend on these things. So I'm actually probably going to be moving away from scratch soon and getting an actual animation software. Thanks to you all, because I've never had money before. I've been broke. But because you guys watch my videos, like, uh, you've changed my life. And I, I can't thank you enough. I know I joke around, but y'all are so genuinely so sweet. And I'm so happy that I get to share these things with you. Yeah, and until next time.